All right, this past Saturday, we finally got to see the absolute mega fight between Ryan Garcia and Gervonta Tank Davis, two of the biggest names in boxing at the moment, and what will probably end up being the biggest boxing pay-per-view to crack a million pay-per-views in a very long time. This fight was highly anticipated for a number of reasons. First of all, these two guys are massive names in the world of boxing, and in the case of Ryan Garcia, a huge name even to those who don't even follow the sport. On top of that, these are two of the most talented and exciting boxers in the sport right now. In round one, both of these guys came out super patient, understanding the level of risk that comes with trying to exchange with one another. In round two, Ryan looked to try to deliver on his promise of a round two knockout, opening up with a lot of punches, a lot of combinations, and he landed some pretty good shots. But his over-reliance on the left hook led him to spamming that same lead hook three or four times, which is all it really took for Gervonta to gauge the distance well enough to time him for a straight left right down the pipe that put Ryan down on the canvas for only the second time in his career. But to his credit, Ryan Ryan got right back up, and though he ended up being a lot more patient after that, he was still the fighter that was coming forward the most. But after that, the fight went pretty much exactly how most people had it going. Javante Davis being the more experienced professional, the guy that's been more battle tested, he was just able to gauge the distance and find his timing way better than Ryan. From the start of the fight, Ryan really struggled to get his jab going, whereas by the second or third round, Javante was just landing straight left hands over and over and over, and Ryan really had little answer. Though Ryan was able to land a couple of nice right hands of his own, none of them were effective enough to cause any huge change in the momentum of this fight. Going into rounds five and six, Ryan started opening up a bit more, being a little more aggressive. I even think he won the sixth round, and I think he might have been on his way to winning round seven up until Gervonta was able to land that straight left to the body, causing Ryan to take a knee, and he was just in too much pain to get back up. Now, I know the narrative that a lot of people are going to try to paint in this fight is that Ryan's a quitter, but I think a lot of people are severely downplaying what it's really like to get hit by a well-placed, well-timed body shot by one of the biggest power punchers in boxing right now. And this might be a little bit of speculation, but it is at this point a well-known fact that Javante Davis's camp actually legitimately had moles in Ryan Garcia's camp. And I think on um, on an Instagram live, bring up how he was told that Ryan got stopped in sparring preparing for this fight by a shot to the body. You didn't get stopped in the gym? No, I didn't. You didn't get stopped in the gym? Yeah, in your camp, man. <laughs> Even though you're in your garage, we're in your camp. Javante had mentioned that he had heard that Ryan got hurt to the body in sparring. Tell me a little bit about that. Where'd you guys hear that from and, and what exactly happened then? Sparring, sparring, yeah. sparring. He got, you know, so he was talking about going to tank body. You better tighten up your body. Yeah. <laughs> and immediately after the fight was over, I saw Ryan Garcia's head coach for this camp, Joe Goosen, come up to him and ask him if it was the rib. So there is a chance that Ryan kind of came into this one with a little bit of an injury in that area that Gervonta knew about and was able to exploit. That being said, I'm not going to sit here and act like that's the reason Ryan lost this fight. Ryan lost this fight because he's the younger less experienced fighter and he went up against somebody that is just about as fast as him probably more powerful and definitely showcased better ring IQ. I think Gervonta Davis at this point has proven that he is legitimately one of the best fighters in boxing right now. He's making a very strong case to be in the pound for pound discussion, but even in a loss, I think it's important to take a moment to recognize the fact that Ryan Garcia did what a lot of people in boxing over the past few years have been too scared to do, which is dare to be great. In a sport where everybody is overly protective of their perfect record, Ryan, even at the age of 24, was willing to go up against who, in my eyes, is easily the most dangerous guy between 130 and 140 pounds in boxing right now. And though he came up short, I still think he had a couple of moments in this fight. And going forward, I think there's a lot of things in this fight that he can pick up on and work to improve to have a great career going forward. Ryan's already made it clear that he plans on going up to 140. I think at some point in the future, if Tank's willing to go up or rematch could potentially one day happen but there's a lot of very interesting matchups for Ryan at 140 pounds and as for Tank it's looking like he's gonna fight the winner of Devin Haney and Vasily Lomachenko on May 20th but overall this was a great fight to watch a gigantic spectacle I know everybody even non-boxing fans were extremely excited to see this one and I'm really interested to see what the pay-per-view numbers for this ended up being let me know in the comments what you guys think of this fight and who do you want to see both of these guys fight next thanks for watching